Now, on to the businessy stuff. And I don't have a PowerPoint presentation prepared. This is not going to be one of those you know, stuffy presentations. I'm not going to be like, and, and this percentage, blah, blah. I did that long enough. So I, this is really just an informal thing. I want to talk to you guys, give you a little bit of knowledge, uh, whale. And uh, if you have any questions, there's going to be Q&A. And I really want this to be a conversation, because I know you guys are going to have some questions. Um, so how has YouTube changed consumer habits? Honestly, our BS meters are higher than ever. We are born being heavily advertised to, and that's made us skeptical people. We, ever, from the moment we're born, people are trying to sell us stuff, sell us stuff. And that's caused us to be skeptical. Um, because of that, advertising on old media, such as television, radio, magazines, newspapers, books, things of that nature, just doesn't yield the same benefit that it once did to advertisers. So because of that, uh, people, just, people just in general aren't really paying attention. Um, a good example would be cable television. How many people here, how do I want to put this? How many people here have cable television? Don't be afraid to put your hand up. You're like, eh. OK, how many people don't have cable television? OK, so the majority. How many people haven't had cable in over five years, like five years or more? OK, so we're getting there. Um, but that's because most of you probably stream your stuff on Netflix, Hulu, you probably watch YouTube videos, you probably use torrents. Everything is online nowadays. So because of that, all of the eyeballs are online. And even the people that have cable television, you probably DVR your favorite program and skip right past the ads anyways. So it's, there's not a lot of value there for advertisers. That's why uh, all the money is going to digital. Even billboards, like really, billboards, I don't get it because even when people are driving, they're as terrible as it is, some people are still texting and driving. Every time you drive, you see somebody on their phone or calling, whatever. And people just, they aren't even paying attention to the road, let alone a billboard. So um, that's, like I was saying, why the advertising dollars are going to digital. Uh, specific, new media specifically, but even more specifically, YouTube. Um, and I'll get to the statistics as to why that's happening in a minute. But that's where the eyeballs are. Now, that's important because obviously advertisers want to be seen for their product. But it's more than just where the eyeballs are. It's that YouTubers create advocacy. For those of you that take marketing or advertising or you know anything about this stuff, advocacy is the highest form that you can hope for if you're uh, advertising. What that is is essentially if you watch a TV show and you see an advertisement for you know, Billy Mays trying to sell you something, you, know, you, you don't trust Billy Mays. He's a creepy guy on the TV with a beard. You, you, you don't know this guy. But if your friend says, hey, go buy a Swiffer, you're much more likely to do that or go see a movie because you trust them. The, it, there's, that barrier is eliminated of skepticism. So that's what we provide as YouTubers. You watch you know, Jenna Marbles or you watch Epic Mealtime and you trust these people. You watch them almost every day. So when they say, hey, go download a book, audio book from Audible, you might be like, yeah, okay, I'll check that out. They would, you know, I trust them. I, I don't think they would try to sell me something that's not good for me. So, uh, yeah, again, like I said, you trust your friends. You don't necessarily trust old media advertising. So just to give you an idea of, I found some startling statistics that in the worst statistics makes people sleep. Trust me, this is really interesting. Advertiser spending, just follow me, <laughs> advertiser spending on digital advertising will overtake television <clears throat> for the first time next year. For the first time in history, it's going to overtake television spending. It's going to hit $103 billion in the year 2019 and represent 36% of all advertising. We're talking digital. That's compared to only $86 billion which is still a big number, but significantly less, on TV ads in the same year, 2019, and only represents 30%. And I assure you, that trend is only going to continue. More and more money is being put into digital, and over the next decade, you're going to see all the money is going to be in digital. So I'm in a good place. Um, <laughs> so the shift isn't happening. It's happened. It's already here. Uh, next year, like I said, it's going to overtake television. But the question is, how does it work? And a lot of you, how many people didn't know you can make a living off of YouTube? didn't know. It's OK if you didn't. Wow, so a lot of you did know that. That's amazing. Uh, there was once a time when, you know, and still to some degree, people still say, like, how do you, what, you upload videos like my grandparents? Forget about it. They, they can't even explain it to them. But the way that it works, I'll give you guys kind of an idea. So you saw an ad play before this video. That is called a, um, that's basically just an advertiser wants to, for example, that was Show Me, uh, the Bell company. They want you to buy their product, so they, do what's called a pre-roll ad on my video. 
when that happens, Google serves them through uh, AdSense or AdWords, and that the advertiser's money goes to YouTube or Google specifically, and 55% goes to me, 45% goes to YouTube. And that's how I make my living. Now that's one way, and there's also of course pop-up ads that you guys are familiar with, which you always X out of. Uh, and a lot of you have um, ad blocker, right? A lot of people use ad blocker because those ads are annoying. Which brings me to the second kind of advertising because of all you lovely people that don't want to watch those ads and use ad blockers. The second kind is our brand integrations. Now brand integrations is when you know, I'll make a video, I don't know, about the 10 creepiest places on earth, and Audible will come to me and say, hey Matt, at the end of the video, say, you know, uh, thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video, you can download an audiobook, audible.com slash Matthew Santoro, blah, 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 and you get a free trial and all that, and they pay me for that. That's where the real money comes in, because you can't skip that, and they know that. So when you're watching the video, it's integrated into the content. So that is, and you're seeing that more and more, and it's not just on YouTube, but you're seeing that in all facets of entertainment, really. It's not just YouTube, it's all of social media. So that's an example of how it works on YouTube, but it's also Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Periscope, Vine, it's everything. And the ads are being put directly in the feed because you can't skip it. You can't use an ad blocker when it's a part of the content. Um, how many people have ever been on like Instagram and you see a promoted post and you're like, God, I hate that. Does that ever annoy you? Where you see like, it's like, oh, buy Skittles. It's like, I don't want Skittles. I don't feel like buying, eating Skittles right now. But it's in your face and that's what they're hoping for. Um, now you can't skip it, it annoys you. However, if it's done properly, advertising of that nature can actually add value to the content. Um, a good example of that is how many people have seen House of Cards on Netflix? Oh man, more you guys gotta watch that. It's a great show. That hurts my soul. Okay, what, what, you, seriously, watch that show. It's phenomenal. But how many people of those, uh, keep your hands up actually, who have seen, who have seen House Cards? Okay, keep your hands up. How many people have noticed the flagrant Sony brand integration in that show? Okay, wow, they're doing a good job then. That's great. Okay, you kept your hand up? Okay, can you give us, yeah, I'm calling, it's your time to shine. Uh, what, what would be, I have an example, but what have you noticed that Sony has done Exactly, thank you. So that's exactly what I was gonna say. During the show, Frank, just if you haven't seen it, Frank uh, is a senator on the show in, in the United States and it's all about politics. It's much more interesting than it sounds. But there's this one, there's multiple scenes where he needs, or needs to get away from it all and he goes downstairs and he plays PlayStation. He does this so much in the show that you don't think about it, but that doesn't happen by accident. Sony paid for that. There's also one specific scene that our friend here mentioned that you probably know what I'm talking about where Frank goes over to his friend's house, who's a senator, and he, you know, he, he shows up at his house, oh, nice to meet you, or good to see you, and he sees a PS Vita, the little handheld gaming system, and the shot goes down to the PS Vita, and Frank goes, oh, is that a PS Vita? And he goes, well, yes, it is. He goes, mind if I try it? He goes, go ahead, and he picks it up, and he's playing it for 10 seconds on screen, PS Vita logo right there, and I'm watching, I'm just going, is this happening right now? Like, this is clearly an advertisement, but, you know, most people would just think, oh, okay, he likes PS Vita, like, well, maybe I'll pick one up, you know, and that's what they're hoping for. You can't skip past that, it's part of the storyline, and that's what they're hoping for. How are we doing for time here? Okay, cool, I probably should have made a clock, oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, so, and I've done that too. Uh, a good example that I can show you, so that's, that's things like Netflix, um, and of course there's brand integrations all over social media. Uh, you'll often see, <laughs> a good example is like Instagram models. I hate to bring this up, but Instagram models, uh, if, and no one's gonna raise their hand so you don't have to do that, but if you follow any Instagram models, you'll often see, not just them, but anyone who's, who's in the entertainment sphere, hold up uh, Mate Fit, or uh, uh, what's that T? Fit T. Fit T, yeah, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. You just gave it away, you follow some Instagram models. That's okay though, but it's very, it's that, they get paid for that and they get paid well. Even like Nicki Minaj the other day, yes I follow Nicki Minaj on Instagram, uh, <laughs> she, she posted something of like mate fit or something and I'm just like, okay yeah, she's making bank off that. But this is how ads are being placed into your content stream. So you see a picture of her, but you also get an advertisement out of it. So if it's done right, it can add and it doesn't have to subtract from the content. Um, a good example is this one here. Shocking, I'm just gonna play this in the background, it's probably an ad. Yep, okay. Uh, this, this video, Shocking Facts You Never Knew About Coffee, 
Um, this video was inspired by Coffee Mate. Coffee Mate came to me and said, hey Matt, we want to sponsor you. I said, great. They paid me a sum of money and the video was formed entirely around the brand. So what this video is about is, and I'll just show you a quick little clip for the sake of time. Uh, if, as soon as I'm done making money. <laughs> uh, okay, so. The gods, always so delicious, so empowering, and once illegal, welcome to Facts in Five, the series that covers the coolest and most interesting facts on a topic in five minutes or less. So the whole video I talk about, really, I, I, it's too long, but uh, I talk about coffee and things you didn't know, like coffee beans are actually berries, they're not beans, things like that. It's pretty cool. Uh, but I want to show you the ad. So this is an example of a brand integration. Now that cup of joe isn't bad for you after all. Bottoms up. I want to give a big thanks to Coffee Mate for sponsoring this video. Bonus fact, one in five cups of coffee in the United States or whitening was Coffee Mate. That's a lot of coffee. They teamed up with Star Wars to create limited edition collectible bottles. And of course, they sent me them from the beautiful United States of America because they know how much I love Star Wars and... Blah, blah, blah. So that's an example. It, so that goes on for 30 seconds. And that's how I make my living is this kind of stuff and the advertising revenue. Um, and that's happening more and more and uh, is, you know, it can be, basically the point I'm trying to make is it can be done in a way that adds value to what you're watching and doesn't detract from it like traditional ads would like on television where it interrupts the broadcast. It's like you're watching it and it's just in there and then you're done.